Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm doing something a little bit different. So this is a freezer meals video. This is going to be all of my all time favorite freezer meals that I have shared over the last few years on my channel. You guys know I'm a huge fan of freezer meals. They are perfect for when you are in a pinch. You just need something to save some time. Also save you money so you're not buying processed food. This is going to be a perfect video for you because I'm sharing all my favorite freezer meals in this one. So let's go ahead and get started. To start off, I'm making a chicken taco chili. I have been making this for years. You're just going to need a bunch of canned goods, a couple cans of diced tomatoes, some beans, a couple cans of tomato sauce, corn, and then for seasonings, you're just going to need some ground cumin, garlic powder, chili powder, black pepper, salt, and then some taco seasoning. I'm gonna have this full recipe linked down below for you guys though, so it'll be really easy for you to follow along with. But I'm actually starting off by writing on my actual Ziploc big it's so much easier to do this before you add all of the ingredients in sometimes I will forget and then I regret it but this is just gonna be a crock pot meal so like I said I'm gonna have everything written out down below for you guys of how you're going to cook this for the chicken I'm just using two whole chicken breasts these were fresh but you could also throw frozen in there if you wanted to there's no problem with that and then you're going to want to take your corn and your black beans and you're going to want to rinse and drain those off you're also going to dump in your two cans of diced tomatoes I always like to use the petite diced tomatoes it's just my personal preference here but you can use whatever you like in your chili and then I'm also adding in one can of chili beans but you don't need to drain those ones off you can leave the chili sauce in there one of my favorite little kitchen gadgets is this kitchen mama can opener it's a really nifty little tool it will open all the cans for me while I'm running around and dumping in all of the other ingredients so I'm just letting that open up my cans while I'm dumping in my taco seasoning I add in a full packet of just regular taco seasoning mix and then I'm also adding in one heaping tablespoon of chili powder about half a teaspoon of some garlic powder probably about half a teaspoon of black pepper and then I'm also adding in probably half a teaspoon of ground cumin as well as about half a teaspoon of some salt of course you can just add that to taste later on though if you want and then I'm adding in my two cans of tomato sauce these are just these smaller cans and that's gonna be it this is a really easy recipe you're just gonna kind of marinate it all together let it mix together throw it in the freezer and this will just get tossed right into the crock pot this chicken taco recipe is super simple. It has very minimal ingredients and it only takes a couple of minutes to throw together. So I'm starting off with about two to three chicken breasts just depending on the size. I'm dumping in one can of Rotel tomatoes, about a teaspoon of ranch seasoning mix. And then for the taco seasoning, I like to add about three quarters of the packet. You can add a little bit more if you want to, but I like to do a little bit less for this one. And that's gonna be it. It's super Super simple of course you could add some diced up onions here green peppers whatever you want to add but I'm just keeping this super simple and you're just gonna throw this in the crock pot on high for about four hours when you pull it out of the freezer and you should be good to go it's a really easy dump and go meal For this next one, I'm gonna be making some tater tot hot dish, which is one of my all-time favorites. I think it's more of a Minnesota thing, or at least a Midwest thing for sure, but I'm just starting off by getting all of my ground beef ready to go. I actually picked up all of my ground beef on sale at our local grocery store, so I'm cooking up all of it, even though I only needed part of it for the tater tot casserole, but I'm just seasoning this up pretty good with some onion powder, garlic powder, as well as just a little bit of salt and pepper I don't do anything super crazy here but I do like a little bit of extra flavor to my ground beef mm -hmm. 
After my ground beef has completely cooked, I am just draining off all of the excess fat into my colander. I always just strain it over a bowl and then I will dump it out, not into my sink because obviously I don't want to put fat down there. But then into my bowl here, I am putting in about a pound of ground beef. It works out to be a little over two cups when I measure it out this way. So that's going to be for one tater tot hot dish. And then I'm adding in one bag of mixed veggies. You can do a little bit more or a little bit less. I'm also adding in one large onion that I just softened in the microwave and then for some extra flavor of course you guys know I'm gonna add in a little bit of garlic powder as well as some black pepper I don't add any extra salt just because I'm gonna be adding in two cans of cream of mushroom and that has quite a bit of sodium in it so I don't like to add any extra salt to mine so now you can see me dumping in those two cans of cream of mushroom and then I'm just gonna mix all of this together This next step is technically optional, but I always put cheese in mine. I just really enjoy it. I usually will put in cheddar cheese or Colby and Monterey Jack, and I'll just kind of mix it throughout, probably maybe like a cup or so, or sometimes I'll actually just sprinkle it on top if I want to do it that way. And then you're just gonna throw this into an aluminum pan so it'll be nice and freezer friendly. Spread it out into one layer, and then we're gonna throw on all of our tater tots. So like I mentioned, I'm actually making three different tater tot hot dishes on this night. So there are my three pans there. They turned out super good. And now I'm just ready to top them with my tater tots. So I picked up this five pound bag of tater tots at Walmart. I think it was like $5 or so. And it made quite a few tater tot casseroles. I definitely got a good three out of them. And I could probably do about half of another one. So this is a great freezer meal. It's pretty budget friendly. And I'm just gonna layer all of my tater tots right onto these casseroles now you don't have to make them all perfect like I do this is just always how my mom did it so that's how I grew up doing it but you could honestly just dump them on there and it would be totally fine it would still taste amazing but just get all of your tater tots on there when you do go to cook this you're gonna thaw it overnight and then you'll just bake it at 375 for about one hour in the oven until those tater tots are nice and crispy and the actual casserole is nice and bubbly so when it comes to storing these though, I like to store them with tin foil, but I definitely like to do a double layer of tin foil anytime that I'm putting anything in the freezer. And I've never had anything get freezer burnt this way. So here you just see me adding on my two layers. And then this is where I will write the instructions on the top. Then if I'm giving these away to anyone, or if my husband is cooking them, he knows exactly how to make the casseroles as well. If you have never made tater tot casserole before, this is definitely one you're gonna want to try out. It makes the best freezer meal and it's so good. My family loves this, I love it. It's definitely one of my favorite comfort foods. For this next recipe, I'm making some lemon pepper chicken. This is another crock pot meal, so it's really easy. Even when you take it out of the freezer, you're just gonna dump it in the crock pot and let it do its thing. Of course, I'm just writing on my bag first, so I don't have to do it after when it's filled with all of the ingredients. So you're basically just gonna cook this on high for four hours or on low for six hours. Now for this bag, I'm using a smaller one. So I just have a quart size Ziploc, and then I'm throwing two chicken breasts right in there. You can also use chicken thighs for the recipe and it also turns out really good that way but now I'm just adding in one teaspoon of onion powder one teaspoon of garlic powder about a teaspoon of Italian seasoning half a teaspoon of paprika and then I'm also adding in about half a teaspoon of lemon pepper the original recipe actually called for lemon juice but I just skip that and add the lemon pepper I also add in just a little bit of some chili flakes as well as some salt and pepper I like to do about a quarter teaspoon of each of those and then I like to add in lots of minced garlic a big heaping tablespoon here I just love garlic in this recipe and then I'm adding in about three tablespoons of butter 
right into there as well as about three quarters of a cup of some chicken broth and that's gonna be it for this dump and go freezer meal super easy just bag it up throw it in your freezer and then you will just throw it in the crock pot when you are ready to make it All right, so the first meal that we are starting with is crock pot Mississippi chicken. Now this is one that I've made over and over again in my family. We love this recipe. So I'm just starting off by writing on my Ziploc bags. Anytime that I'm making a freezer meal, I always use gallon Ziplocs, or most of the time anyway. I just write the recipe on them, how to cook it, if I need to thaw it overnight. So for this recipe, you are going to want to thaw it overnight, or you can throw in the crock pot. Frozen is totally fine too, but I'm just prepping my bags here and we're gonna get started so for this recipe I really like to use boneless skinless chicken thighs I usually get one of these big packages and then split it in two recipes and that's the perfect amount for my family I want to say it's about two pounds or so in each bag here For the seasoning on this chicken, you're gonna want a package of a Jew gravy mix. I like to split this between the two bags. If you like yours a little bit stronger and a little bit on the saltier side, then you can go ahead and use one per bag. But I really like to split both of these packages up. It works perfect. I find that it's about the right amount of salt that way. And then you're gonna do the same with the ranch seasoning, split that in half, and then you're gonna to wanna to do about half a stick of butter in each bag. For the pepperoncini peppers, you can add however many you want. If you add more, it's gonna be more more tangy and less obviously will be less tangy but I usually do about four or five per bag and then just a little splash of that um, juice in there and it's perfect and I'm just gonna seal these up pop them in my freezer and then when I go to cook these I will put them on high in the crock pot for about four hours until the chicken is fully cooked through For this next recipe, I am making crock pot barbecue chicken. Now this is a tried and true recipe that I will make over and over again. So I'm just starting by mixing up all of the sauce. And no, I do not just put barbecue on my barbecue chicken. I love to add a few other ingredients that just make it super flavorful and delicious. But into each bag here, I'm just starting off with one cup of the Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce. Here I'm adding about a quarter cup of zesty Italian dressing and then a quarter cup of brown sugar. And then I'm also gonna add in some Worcestershire sauce. I feel like this really brings out the flavor. You're gonna want about a tablespoon of that, just a tiny bit of salt and pepper. You can also add garlic powder if you want to. It's just personal preference. I like to add just a little bit. And then I'm adding in a couple of chicken breasts in there. So this day I did about three. If you have super large ones, you might wanna do two, just kinda of depending on the side. And then I'm just going to seal these up. I'm gonna cook these again in the crock pot on high for about four hours and this is delicious shredded up in wraps you can do it over salads you can do it in sandwiches it's just a delicious versatile chicken the next meal that we're making is crock pot buffalo chicken this is another super versatile chicken recipe so I'm just starting off with like three to four chicken breasts in each bag I would say probably three unless they're on the smaller side and then I'm adding about a tablespoon of ranch seasoning in here along with some wing sauce I usually will just use the generic brand and you're gonna want about a half a cup you can do a little bit more or a little bit less just depending on your preferences and then you're just gonna seal this up pop it in your freezer when you go to cook it you're just going to cook it on high in the crock pot for four hours you can shred this up and serve it in wraps on salad sandwiches it's also really good on pizza but it's a really yummy recipe the next freezer meal are these chicken queso tacos. Now this is definitely my favorite chicken taco recipe. I'm just starting off with one can of Rotel tomatoes in each bag. You're gonna want about a package of taco seasoning or two tablespoons. I like to use the homemade mix, which I will show you later on in this video. And then you're gonna want to add in about half a jar of this queso into each bag. This is a large jar. I'm not sure how many ounces it was, but you're gonna want about half a jar in each bag. Of course, you can do a little bit more but I feel like this is about right for a freezer meal and then you're just gonna add your chicken in there so you're gonna want about I would say two to three chicken breasts just again depending on the size on this day I did three so 
that is this freezer meal and again this one's just gonna get cooked on high for four hours once it's done in the crock pot go ahead and shred it up serve this as tacos or it's also really good on salad or also in quesadillas so another really yummy freezer meal For this next dinner, we are making some chicken fajitas, which is one of my personal favorites. I have all my veggies prepped here, so I have one onion and three peppers for each of the bags. So just go ahead and thinly slice all of those up, and then you're just gonna add those right into your gallon size Ziplocs. So this recipe is actually one that you are gonna bake in the oven. This is not a crock pot meal. I will have the recipe linked below and you can follow all of the measurements there to make it nice and simple. But then we're just gonna be adding in all of the seasonings and also some olive oil. So you're gonna want about two tablespoons of olive oil. And then for seasonings, you're gonna want a tablespoon of chili powder, one tablespoon of cumin, one teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of dried oregano, and then about half a teaspoon of onion powder and then of course you're gonna want a little bit of salt and pepper like I said this recipe is going to be linked down below once you're done having it in the freezer and you're ready to pull it out you're just gonna go ahead and thaw it overnight and then you're gonna to toss this into the oven for about 400 degrees and then you do bake it for about 10 minutes on each side just toss all of those fajitas up so good and so delicious it turns out absolutely amazing and then of course I just have my chicken here that I'm adding in the recipe calls for about a pound of chicken. I probably had closer to like a pound and a half here, but you can do a little bit more or a little bit less, just depending on what you have on hand. And then you're just gonna seal all of these up. I know that was a lot of measurements. So like I said, the link for that recipe is going to be in my description box. I recently made these fajitas again but this time I actually served them over just some rice instead and it was so good so if you want an alternative to having them in tortillas rice is a really yummy option all right so for this next recipe this one was a bit of an experiment but we are gonna be making some grilled chicken so basically this is like a grilled chicken marinade you're gonna put everything into a bag and then pop it into your freezer when you want a really quick and easy dinner take it out the night before thaw it overnight and you're gonna have some really amazing marinade for your chicken so here I'm starting off with about half a cup of olive oil the recipe does call for canola oil but I always use olive oil and then you're gonna want a quarter cup of balsamic vinegar three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce three tablespoons of soy sauce and then you're gonna want about a third cup of honey and then for the lime juice here, I always like to just use the pre-juiced lime. Of course, a regular lime would probably be better, but I am a little bit lazy. But I would say you're gonna want a little over a tablespoon of lime juice, a tablespoon of Dijon mustard, or as you can see here, I'm just using regular mustard. I've used both and both work totally fine for this recipe. You're gonna want a good big scoop of minced garlic, about the equivalent of four cloves, some dried parsley, two teaspoons of salt, a teaspoon of black pepper, and this is my favorite grilled chicken marinade ever. We've been making this one for quite a while, but this was my first time actually putting it in the freezer, and it turned out really, really well. The trick is to grill this low and slow on the grill, and it is absolutely delicious. Okay, so for this next freezer meal, I wouldn't say this is necessarily a meal. This is more of like a mom hack especially if you are a busy mom and you just need things that are quick and easy oftentimes, especially when it comes to dinner and you're losing your mind at the end of the day. That is me oftentimes. I a lot of times will stock up on ground beef if it's on sale. We do buy a quarter cow at a time, but like on this particular day I had bought a bunch of it in bulk from our local grocery store and it was a really good price too. So all I'm gonna do is cook this up in my pan, do a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper and this is the most versatile thing to have in your freezer I just freeze this totally pre-cooked in one pound increments and it is so convenient you've probably seen me cooking with this in a lot of my what's for dinner videos it is just so easy when you need something really quick for dinner and you didn't thaw out any meat or anything all I do is take this out of the ziploc I put it on a plate 
All I do is stick it in the microwave for like two minutes and it's perfectly thawed out, ready to pop into a pan for spaghetti, for tacos, for any sort of recipe that calls for ground beef. You can also cook it up with onions if you like your ground beef cooked with onions. But you guys, if you take nothing else from this video and you are a mom that needs a really, really quick and easy dinner idea, this is it. Just have some pre-cooked ground beef in there. Same with like pre-cooked chicken. It's just nice to have a pre-cooked meat that you don't have to think about and thaw out ahead of time. So try this out if you've never tried it before. One pound increments. I promise you, you will thank me later. It is the best thing ever. Next up, we are making some tacos, which is super basic, but before we actually get into how I make my tacos, I'm gonna share with you my taco seasoning recipe. I will have it linked down below too, but it's super easy and it's cheap to make yourself and you don't have any of the extra like additives and junk in there. But this is half a cup of chili powder, three tablespoons of garlic powder, three tablespoons of onion powder, three tablespoons of salt, three tablespoons of cumin, a tablespoon of oregano, tablespoon of paprika, a tablespoon of pepper. All you're gonna do is mix this up and then you can just store it in your little mason jar. Anytime you go to make tacos, you're gonna want about two tablespoons for one pound of ground beef. And it's really good taco seasoning. It's not as salty, I wouldn't say, as regular taco seasoning. It's way cheaper and it doesn't have all of the additives and junk in it, which is what I was trying to avoid. So I'm just getting that mixed up here and then I'll show you how I make my tacos. I always like to add chopped onion into my tacos. I just feel like it bulks up the meat a little bit and it adds a lot of extra flavor too. So here you see me chopping up two large onions. I would say you're gonna want about one small onion per pound of meat. So I'm doing four pounds of taco meat and two large onions, so. Add a little bit more or a little bit to less, just depending on what you prefer. I also sometimes will add in chopped green peppers into my tacos. It's a great way to sneak veggies in there too. So like I said, I'm just making four pounds of tacos here and then I'm gonna add in my chopped onion and then I'm just gonna brown this up. You guys know what to do. Go ahead and cook your ground beef as you normally would. Cook it till it's all the way cooked and then we're gonna drain off any of the excess fat. I will say we normally buy a quarter of a cow at a time and we still have some in our freezer but when I buy meat like this from the store, I feel like it's a lot more fatty than what we normally get from our local farmer. So there was a lot more fat to drain off. And then I'm just throwing that back into my pan with about a cup of salsa. And then this is where you're gonna want your taco seasoning. So like I said, you're gonna want two tablespoons of seasoning for each pound of ground beef. Add a little bit of water. And then I just like to simmer this for like five-ish minutes or so. And then you're just gonna let it cool so we can package it into bags. After it's packaged, I just use quart size freezer Ziplocs and I add about a pound each. I just divide it out. And again, this is one of those really quick and easy things to thaw out all I do is put it in the microwave for like two minutes and it's perfectly warmed up you can throw it into a pan or you can just do it in like a glass bowl warm it up that way and all you have to do is chop up like lettuce and whatever other fixings you like on your tacos and this is a really quick and easy dinner that's relatively healthy and you don't have to really plan for it you can just pull it out of the freezer on a whim when you did not plan anything ahead of time which happens to me all the time so this is a really helpful one as well this next freezer meal is probably one of my favorites. We are just gonna be making some sloppy joes. So again, I'm just gonna chop up some onion. For this recipe, I used about three large onions for four pounds of ground beef. You can do a little bit more, but a little bit less, and that's totally fine. But I'm just chopping those up here before I get started with the ground beef. So this sloppy joe recipe I have shared before on my channel, and I get a lot of comments about it that people say it's a really good one. I feel like it's a perfect balance of tangy and sweet. It's not, I don't know, it's just a really, really good one. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. Even if you don't do it as a freezer meal, it's just a really yummy sloppy joe recipe that seems to be a family favorite and a crowd pleaser. Mm -hmm. 
All right, so into my skillet here, I have four pounds of ground beef and I'm just adding all of those chopped onions in there. So to make this easier, I am going to just share the recipe for a single batch of this and then I'll write it out in my description box as well. So ignore what I'm actually putting in here because I'm just gonna give you the measurements for a single batch. But for one batch, you're gonna want a can of tomato sauce. That's just an eight ounce can. You're gonna want a quarter cup of brown sugar and then you're gonna want half a cup of barbecue sauce. I always, always use the Sweet Baby Ray's original. That's our favorite. It works really well in this recipe. And then you're also gonna want half a cup of ketchup for a single batch of this. And then I'm gonna, you're gonna want about two tablespoons of mustard. I just use the yellow mustard. You could also use the deli mustard if you want to. And then you're gonna want about a tablespoon and a half of apple cider vinegar. And you do wanna make sure that it's apple cider vinegar and it's perfect in this recipe just give it a little tang and then you can add in some black pepper a little bit of salt if you want to but definitely don't go overboard on it give that a good mix together and then you're just going to add this right into your ground beef mixture once it's all done cooking and then I like to simmer this for like 10 minutes or so and then you're going to let all of this cool off so you can put it into your ziplocs So make sure that this mixture is completely cooled off before you're adding it into your Ziplocs. You definitely don't want any of the plastic leaching into your food. So I'm just dividing this out into four bags. I usually like to do about a pound in a freezer meal for us just because that's about the family size that we are. It works well for us, but this is definitely one of my favorite, favorite recipes. Definitely a family favorite, and I think you guys will really like this one. If you try this recipe specifically, definitely let me know down in the comments. It's just a delicious one that I think you guys will really enjoy, and then I'm just going to seal these up, pop them in the freezer, and whenever I'm ready, I can just thaw them out super quick and easy. For this first recipe, I'm making some meatballs with a marinara sauce and some mozzarella cheese. So I'm starting off with one pound of ground pork and one pound of ground beef. And then I'm adding in about a teaspoon and a half of salt. I think next time I will only add in one teaspoon of salt though, so that's what I would recommend. And then I'm also adding in one tablespoon of Italian seasoning. You're gonna want half a tablespoon of garlic powder, half a teaspoon of black pepper, half a teaspoon of onion powder, and then about a tablespoon of some dried parsley. And then of course, to bind all of that together I'm just adding in one egg and then I'm also adding in about a quarter cup of some Parmesan cheese for some extra flavor and then I'm just using my hands to mix all of this together these are some great Italian meatballs with a ton of flavor in them I should also mention that if you are not doing keto or low carb, you could definitely add some Italian breadcrumbs into this mixture and that would pair perfectly with these meatballs. And then once I have all of it mixed together, I'm just taking my cookie dough scooper. I love using this thing to scoop out meatballs. I think it works so much better and it makes them all about the same size and just takes way less time this way. And I also don't have to touch the meat quite as much. So I usually will scoop them all out first onto my baking sheets and then I will go go back and roll them up into meatballs. So you can actually go ahead and freeze the meatballs just like this once you get them all rolled up or you can go ahead and pre-bake them, which is what I decided to do on this day. These were actually all meals for my dad and I just thought it would be easier for him to have some that he could just throw in the microwave if he needed to take something to work with him or just a really quick and easy dinner. So I just threw these into a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes and they came out absolutely perfect. They had tons of flavor in them and they were really delicious. 
So you could just throw all of these meatballs right into a freezer gallon Ziploc if you wanted to, but I did decide to take it one step further and I did portion them out. So I added about five meatballs into each container and this made quite a few different meals, so that was really great. And then I just decided to top them with some marinara sauce. I tried to get one that didn't have any extra sugar added in there. And then I also added on some mozzarella cheese. And this is a really great weeknight dinner. This is a great thing to prep ahead of time for your kids as well. I know my kids really love meatballs and marinara sauce, so this is definitely a really family-friendly recipe. For this next recipe, I'm making some sausage and egg bites. This is perfect for breakfast or even if you need something quick for lunch or for dinner. So I'm just starting off with a little over a dozen eggs and just cracking them into a bowl. A lot of times when I do this, I will make just a huge batch of these and I will stick them in the freezer. And we honestly go through them pretty quickly because our whole family really enjoys them. So just go ahead and get all of your eggs cracked into your bowl. We are going to be adding in pork here, so I didn't want to add too much salt, but I did about half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and then about half a teaspoon of some pepper, and I'm just whisking all of this together. Now if you are not on a keto or a low carb diet, you can add in about a quarter cup of milk here just to kind of make them a little bit fluffier, but since I was going for low carb, I didn't do that on this day. And then I'm adding in just a couple cups of spinach that I had frozen in my freezer. I'm also adding in about half a pound of some pork sausage and then about a cup of some cheddar cheese. And then I'm just gonna mix all of this together. Now moving over to my muffin tin, I'm just spraying it with some oil so that the eggs don't stick. Definitely make sure that you have it sprayed really well because these will stick otherwise. And then I'm just taking a measuring cup and kind of scooping this egg mixture right into my muffin tins. So you can fill these pretty full. You don't want them quite to the top, but you definitely do want them filled up pretty good if you want a good size egg bite. I baked these in a 375 degree oven for about 20 minutes just until those edges are starting to get a little bit brown. You do want them to kind of brown up on the edges. It just really helps with the texture and to make sure that the eggs are fully cooked through. Once I fully cooked them, I just moved them over to my cooling rack and I let them cool completely before storing them so nothing gets soggy when I put it in the freezer bag. These are honestly one of our favorite freezer breakfasts and they're also pretty healthy for you. You can add tons of different veggies in there if you want, but I just kept them pretty simple. So I'm just throwing all of these into a freezer bag and to warm them up, all you have to do is put them onto a plate and into the microwave until they are completely hot and you have a really quick and easy breakfast. Breakfast. This next recipe is a very simple freezer meal. So this is just called sausage and peppers. So for me, for the sausage here, I actually used some Polish sausage. You guys know I use this all the time in recipes. We have a ton of it in our freezer because it's venison sausage. So I'm starting off with about a pound or four lengths of this and I'm just slicing it up. So 
So one little tip when it comes to freezer meals is to make sure that you are labeling the bag before you actually put the ingredients in or it's going to be super hard to write on the bag. So onto this bag I'm just putting the date, what the meal is, and also the directions on how to cook it. So basically you're going to want to thaw this overnight and then it will get thrown into the crock pot. But I will have all of the recipes in my description box so it will be really easy for you guys to follow along with. Now into my gallon Ziploc, I'm just adding in all of the sausage that I cut up. So like I said, this is Polish sausage, but you can definitely use whatever your family prefers. The recipe did actually call for Italian sausage, but I just know my dad really likes Polish, so that's what I used. And then I also added in two bell peppers that I had sliced up, along with one white onion that was also sliced. Now for some extra flavor, I'm adding in one can of petite diced tomatoes, as well as about a tablespoon of olive oil. I just eyeballed it. And then you're gonna want about a tablespoon of some minced garlic in there. For some extra flavor, I'm adding in about half a teaspoon of some dried basil, half a teaspoon of dried oregano. And then the recipe didn't call for it, but I did decide to add in about half a teaspoon of some salt, as well as about half a teaspoon of pepper, just for some extra flavor. And then of course I added in just a few little shakes of some red chili flakes because you got to have all of that flavor in there. And then you're just going to get all of the air out of this bag. I like to press mine flat so it stores really nice in the freezer and then it is good to go. For this next recipe, I am making some venison fajitas, which is definitely a family favorite. So I'm starting off with about two pounds of some venison steaks that I have cut into strips. And then I'm also adding in one yellow onion that's all sliced up, along with three bell peppers that are all sliced and ready to go. And then the recipe also calls for about a quarter cup of lemon juice. You're going to want a good amount of garlic. The recipe calls for about five garlic cloves here, but of course, just eyeball it and then you're gonna want three tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce which I was completely out so I actually had to add it in later on and then you're going to want about a tablespoon of some ground cumin as well as about a tablespoon of some chili powder and then for salt and pepper you're gonna want one teaspoon of salt and then half a teaspoon of black pepper and that is it for this recipe I do like to kind of mix it together just a little bit just to make sure the seasoning gets coated on everything but then you're just going to lay it flat press it out and I will have all of the directions to store this and cook it in the description box for this next recipe I'm making some chicken queso tacos I actually shared this recipe in one of my recent crock pot videos but I had to share it here again because it's honestly one of my all-time favorites it's a really good recipe so I'm just starting off with one large chicken press or you could use two smaller ones. And then I'm adding in about half a package of taco seasoning mix along with one can of Rotel tomatoes. And then here is the real hero for this crock pot meal. You're gonna want about a cup of salsa con queso. This is just gonna make this super creamy and delicious. I promise you this is one of the best taco recipes that I have ever tried. It is so, so good. So I'm just gonna mix all of this together and then I'm gonna cook it on high for about four hours now I will say you can actually dump all of these ingredients right into a freezer bag if you want but I went ahead and I wanted to cook it for my dad so he could basically just take it out of the freezer and throw it in the microwave and warm it up for a really quick and easy dinner but you can definitely just throw all of these ingredients into a freezer bag and then thaw it overnight and throw it into your crock pot that way if you prefer it like that Once my chicken was completely cooked through, I just shredded it up and then of course again I'm labeling my freezer bag so I don't forget what is in here. And since this chicken is already cooked, you can just take it right out of the freezer, throw it into the microwave and warm it up that way. And then to serve these, you're going to want to serve it with some lettuce, some sour cream, some cheese. And if you are doing the low carb diet, then definitely go ahead and do the low carb tortillas or you could also serve it with a salad and just do like a taco salad and that would be really good as well. But this is definitely one of our favorite taco recipes. 
right, you guys, that is going to wrap up this marathon freezer meals video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.